Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and on this one, we're going to be doing a much-requested Pokemon, which is going to be Meloetta. We're going to be doing the best Meloetta build for Raids on Pokemon Scout and Violet. This Pokemon's kind of cool. It can change forms and change types mid-battle with just the use of one move, so I did have a lot of fun with this Pokemon, and I'm sure you will too. Now, as far as I'm aware, you can't actually get Meloetta anymore unless you actually got it from a code back in the day, or you got it from the Pokemon Go Fest on Pokemon Go. Now, if you enjoy these type of builds, make sure to hit the subscribe button, turn that notification bell on so you don't miss another video. There's plenty more where that came from. And come join the Discord. Would love to see you over there. It's a lot of fun over there. And I can help you out even more if that's what you want. Link will be in the description. So let's get into the Terra type first. For the Terra type we're going to be running is actually going to be a fighting Terra type because the form we change into is going to go to a fighting type. And who doesn't love a good fighting type? Now, let me show you where to actually change the Terra type in case you don't know. But what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to fly over to Medallion east once you get here we're just going to be heading towards the treasure eatery and then we're just going to speak to the chef at the top and he will take 50 shards and change your terror type to any type so you just want to find fighting do that and change your Meloetta into a fighting type terror. Now the item we're going to be running is going to be the metronome. What this does is every time we use a move, its power increases by 20% every single time, as long as you're using it back to back to back to back. So if we use it twice in a row, back to back turns, it will be 120% damage on the second turn. Then we use it again, 140, then 160, 180 and 200. It will stay at 200 until it gets interrupted. So it's a very powerful item as long as you're just using one move after you set up. Now let me show you where to get that item. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be flying over to Lavincia North. Once you get here, we're going to be visiting the Deli Bro shop. When you get there, just go inside, click on battle items and then scroll down. And then you just want to buy the metronome for 15,000 poker dollars and then equip it onto your Meloetta. After we get out of the Deli Bro shop, come to any Chansey Supply Shop, we will be changing our nature to an adamant nature because we're going to be a physical attacking build because after we change farm, all our special attack goes to our physical attack and we'll be a stronger physical attacker. So I want you to buy an Adamant Mint for 20,000 polka dollars and use it on your Meloetta. What this does is it increases our attack and reduces our special attack. Now don't worry about them stats right there. It will change when we actually change form. Now our EVs are going into HP and attack, HP plus 5 ability, attack for damage. If you want to know where to get your HP items and your attack items, just go in the Chansey Supply Shop again. Buy 26 HP ups for your HP, 26 proteins for your attack. Cost you 520,000 poker dollars, so it is quite expensive. And if you don't have the money to do that, you can actually train five Pokemon at once doing this. But we're just going to focus on Meloetta for now. Go to any Daily Bro shop, then click on General Goods, and then you want to go to the bottom. They will be your Power Weight and your Power Bracer. Those were the other ones we want Power Bracer for attack and Power Weight for HP. Now, these are items that give you eight additional EVs per kill. Let me show you where to train HP first, and then I'll show you where to train attack. So for HP, what we're going to do is we're going to put a waypoint on this pond right here. Fly over to the Pocket Path Lighthouse and just make our way over. When you get over to this pond, you're going to be using a fairy type encounter level 2 sandwich. This will cause a ton of Azuril to spawn, and we need to take out 28 of these. So a good way of doing this, get a version in your actual party, make sure it's level 100 so it can just knock out everything with ease. Teach it payday, use PP up on payday twice, it will go to 28. 28 is the exact number of Azuril we need to take out to get our max HP EV. So when that reaches zero, then you have a max HP EV. And if it has the amulet coin as well as payday, you get a thousand poker dollars every time you take out a Pokemon. So you'll end up with 28 thousand more poker dollars than you did before so you're actually making money off this now let's move on to the actual attack so for the attack what we're going to do is we're going to go a little bit up we're going to fly over to south province area three and around this area you want to use an electric type level two encounter power sandwich this will cause a ton of shinks to spawn and you just want to take out 28 of those but if you do see any young goose and growl if you can take those out as well because they give attack evs out as well moving on to the ivs to check your ivs go in your main menu and then click in boxes and then you're going to be hovering over your Meloetta and then you want to click the plus button. It will show you all your max IVs and just check how many you need because we'll need to go get some battle capped. If you don't have max IVs, you don't need to do the actual special attack because the majority of our moves will be physical attacks. So fly over to any daily bro shop. I'm going to go to the one on the and off. Once you're inside, just click on general goods and the first item will be a battle cap by however many you need. And then we're going to be flying over to Montenever. And then you want to speak to the person next to the Obama Snow. He will have to train your Pokemon. I'm going to use Persian as an example because my Meloetta has max IV, so it won't really do anything. 
uh, and then you want to click on bottle cap and then click HP, attack, defense, special defense and speed, then start the training. Now you can do special attack if you want to, because one of our attacks will actually be a special type move. But it'll only be the first attack, so it's not going to do much, but it's going to do a tiny bit more damage. So the ability we're going to have is going to be Serene Grace. This is actually a really cool move. It raises the likelihood of additional effects occurring when the Pokemon uses its moves. So let's say Relic Sung, it can put people to sleep. With this ability, it's got a better chance of putting people to sleep because it's an added effect if you like this video so far smash that like button it does go a long way let's move on to the move set so for the move set we're going to have drain punch sleep talk swords dance and relic song drain punch is going to be our main move it's going to do a ton of damage and it's just going to keep us alive i'll raid because we are draining health from our opponent and because after we change form we're a fighting type we do get stabbed from it sleep talk i put that in there for a bit of fun there's a lot of raid pokemon that actually put you to sleep and for a change i thought i'd use sleep talk might be a bit interesting if we do get put to sleep third move is going to be sword stance it's going to be our strongest setup move it raises our physical attack by two stages every time we use it our last move is relic song this actually changes us from this to the fighting form so the pokemon will change its hair to like red and curly looks cool and we will actually go to a fighting type it's actually quite a powerful move just in general and it can put people to sleep so we can actually set up while they're sleeping if all goes to plan if you do feel like you need more drain punches though, just to add a couple of PP up there. I don't think it's needed, but that's up to you. Now Relic Song is just a move that we learn through level up, so get to level 100 and just relearn it. However, Sword Stance, Sleep Talk and Drain Punch are LTM, so I'm going to have to show you where to actually find the items to get these moves. First off, you're just going to come to any Pokemon Center, go to the green section. This is going to be the TM machine. What we're going to do first is we are going to get Sleep Talk first, going to be TM70. We'll need Hippopotas and Slowpoke, so let's go get them. So to get Hippopotas, we're going to be coming right here on the map. So what I want you to do is just fly over to West Province Area 1 and North, and then just make your way to the left side of the desert. So right around here, anywhere in this location, you can find Hippopotas, Hippodon, and that lot. You just want to take them out, and you will get your Hippopotas sand, and then we can go get our Slowpoke. So to get Slowpoke, fly over to Casroya Watchtower number one, and you want to jump off on the actual Casroya Lakeside, and just look around in this location until you see a Slowpoke. It shouldn't take too long, and then you just want to take it out and you will get your Slowpoke Claw. Next is going to be TM88 Swords Dance. So we need Zangoose Claw, Gibble Scales, and Cypher Claws. Let me show you where to get these. So back where we got the Slowpoke, we're going to be doing the same thing, going to Catch Rider Watchtower number one, jumping off on the lake side. And when you get here, just look around for a Cypher. Shouldn't take too long. There's one right there. We're just going to take that out, and then we'll get our Cypher Claw. Moving on to the Gibble, I'll fly over to Alpha Nada. And then we're just going to be going to that cave right over there. Once you're in here, just follow the path until you see a gibble or a goodbye that normally in families together. Don't jump off, there's no point, just follow the path slowly. If you get to this point where the cave's going to end, just go back and go back up. Normally you'll find it on the way down, but if you get unlucky then you might have to go up and down a couple of times. So there's a family right there, we're just going to take them out and that will get us our gibble scales. Moving on to Zangoose, what we're going to need to do is come right here on the map. So fly over to the shrine, make your way over on the next nearest location. When you get to the top, just look out for a Zangoose. They can be quite hard to find sometimes, so you might need to make an encounter power normal type sandwich. Luckily, that's not the case. We found one almost straight away. So we're just going to take that out and we will get our Zangoose Claw. Finally, we have a 73 Drain Punch, so we'll need Krogunk Poison, Mankey Fur, and Krabrala Shells. I'm going to show you where to get the Krabrala Shells first, because the other two Pokemon are in the same location. So for the Krabrala Shells, we're going to come here where my Ice Type Raid is. We're going to fly over to East Province Area 3 Rest Stop and just make our way over. And we're just going to be going to this island that you see right here. And there should be tons of Krabrala on here, and maybe even a Krabominable if you haven't taken it out already. And we'll get our Krabrala Shells. Now for the next two Pokemon, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming right here where this water source is and Mankey will be right here Krogunk will be right here so let me just fly over to South Province Area 5 make my way over now you can find Krogunk in the swamp leading up to there so just keep an eye out and if you do find one then just take it out so we did find one so we're just going to take that out right under this little branchy area right here and we'll get our Krogunk poison and then we want to climb this wall at the top in this grassy area you can find Mankey's there's a Mankey right there, so we're just going to take that out, and we will get our Mankey fur. If you can't find the Krogunk in the actual swamp area, 
I tend to find it more around the edge of this water source right here for some reason. Just do a few circles around here until you find one. And that's the full build. Let's get into some raids so I can actually show off how good this Mellowetta is. Do apologize, but we didn't have any game volume during the actual build part of the video. I fixed the problem now and we will have audio from now on. Again, I do apologize. Let's get into the first raid though. It's a steel type six star lichen rock. Let's get straight into it. Them green eyes in the crystallization mirrors are pretty cool. So first up, we're going to use Relic Song. He taunts us, that's fine. So we do hit him with a Relic Song. And as you can see right now, we do change farm into our fighting farm. The only problem is we're still under the taunt, so we can't actually set up yet. So we're just going to use Drain Punch. I'm just going to use a Goal out here. Why not? We're not going to be doing too much damage anyway until we use Swords Dance. And his Rock Slide is actually neutral against us now because we're a fighting type. So we're going to use Sales Dance here, raise that attack by two stages. He might use Taunt again. He doesn't, he uses Rock Slide. So we're going to use Sales Dance again. I kind of like using Sales Dance twice. Uh, use it once if you're against a really strong Pokemon who's doing too much damage where you can't afford to use it twice. You'll still be able to get the raid done. And after you use the Sales Dance once or twice, we're just going to go back to Drain Punch and we're just going to use it all raid. Look at that, a lot of damage, and we go back to full health every single time. He nullifies the stat changes on our side. That is very unfortunate. We've only had one attack, and then uses Taunt. So that is very unfortunate, but we can Terrestrialize now, so we're going to do that. So we have Terrestrialized, and now we are not a normal type anymore, just pure fighting. The shield goes up. We use Drain Punch again. It's doing quite a decent amount of damage to that shield. And because we're stacking our metronome up now, I don't think I'm going to use Cell Stance when we actually get the chance. I'm just going to let that actual metronome do its job. And we're just going to get stronger every single turn, gain more health every single turn, do more damage every single turn. It's going to be amazing. So we use Drain Punch again and break that shield. There's the shield going down. And then we hit him with another Drain Punch after the shield goes down. I don't think this will finish him off. Oh, it does finish him off. Oh, it was a critical hit. That's amazing. And we have three drain punches left and we have finished him up. And uh, it was going quite bad that raid in terms of him nullifying as soon as we used both our Sars Dance, him using Tarn, all that stuff. And we still had three left. So let's move on to the second raid. So this one's going to be a bit more difficult because it does have play rough and it's a fairy type. But it's going to be a six star normal type Mimikyu. Let's see how it goes. So I'm going to use Sars Dance first instead of using Relic Dance first because we are not weak to play rough at the minute. He hits us with a player off. Don't decrease our attack. Yay. We're going to use Sal's Dance a second time. He hits us with another player off. It reduces our attack. So we're going to use it a third time. So now we're on plus five. Right. His attacks are very strong now because of that Misty Terrain. But I think we can survive an attack because he doesn't use Sal's Dance till later on. So we hit him with the Relic Song and change forms. He hits us with a player off. Does about 100 damage. Let's see how much damage Drain Punch does. I'm hoping for a lot of damage. We're on plus five at the minute. So it does a decent amount of damage. We'll just do more and more every single turn now because of our actual metronome. We go back to full health. He hits us with a play rough. Can we get the crit? We hit him with another drain punch. It takes him below half and takes us back up to full health. He hits us with a play rough and then the shield goes up. Hopefully that misty terrain goes soon. He removes negative effects from himself. Please just don't nullify us. He removes negative effects from himself again. Uh, we're going to terrestrialize here and hit him with a drain punch. That should take care of his shield, if not most of it. So this is the third drain punch in a row. So our metronome will be at 140%. So we do use drain punch after we terrestrialize. And let me just say, terrestrialize looks amazing on this Pokemon. It suits it so well. We do break the shield in one shot, which is amazing. No matter what happens now, we win. He uses his Sales Dance. I don't think he can even one-hit us with a Sales Dance and miss the terrain up. No, he can't. And we can just finish him off with a Drain Punch. So there's the last Drain Punch. There's Mimikyu going down a Pokemon that was super effective against us. And we had over half the time remaining, which is amazing. Meloetta is a beast. Would highly recommend using her if you have her. Now let's move on to that third raid. So for our third raid, we have a six star dark type Haxorus. Let's get straight into it. So this thing does have Dragon Dance. I just don't know when it's going to use it. Or else with the Intimidate coming in clutch. So we're going to hit him with a Relic Song first because it does have first impression and crunch. He uses crunch. That's going to be not very effective. Big brain plays right there. Unless it lowers our defense. Okay, now we're going to use Sars Dance. He uses Outrage, that's fine. We use Sars Dance a second time. He hits us with an Outrage, we go to 150 health. And this is where we start to use Drain Punch. Amazing, the Haxorus has been burnt by Drifflim, I would imagine. We do a lot of damage with Drain Punch, go back up, up to full health. Haxorus isn't doing any damage here while burnt. Oh, he got a critical hit, never mind. We're going to use Drain Punch again, this should do a lot of damage. Now he's below half, his shield should go up. He hits us with an Outrage, doesn't do too much because of the burn. His shield goes up. 
Perfect time to terrestrialize and use Drain Punch with our 140% metronome boost. I absolutely love Malware. So let's see how much damage it does. Can it take out the shield? Not quite. Nearly takes out the full shield, but not quite. We go back to full health though. Let's see what he does. He uses Outrage. He hurts himself in confusion instead of using Dragon Dance. That's funny. He steals some of our Terror Charge. And then we're going to finish him off with one last Drain Punch. We love a bit of Malware. Now, I would highly recommend using this Pokemon if you've got it tucked away in home somewhere or you just have it unbuilt in one of your boxes. And if you don't, then there will be a giveaway on the actual Sunday and you can have a chance of getting it. So hopefully you guys manage to get your hands on it as soon as possible. Amazing Pokemon and another amazing Pokemon. We did an Arceus build last week that was so strong. I'm going to put it on screen right now and I'll catch you on the next one.